Hey everyone, what is going on? It is Crypto Bobby. Hope you're having a great day, great night, wherever you are watching in from. Very interesting day in the cryptocurrency world with a lot of stuff going on. First, we have probably the biggest hack in terms of fiat value wise at the time of the hack, uh, CoinCheck just getting their NEM swiped off the face of the earth. So we will talk about that. Also talk about some of the big important people uh, blabbering on about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin at Davos because that is really who matters in the world, right? And then we also have some pretty big progress happening with Lightning, at least from a user's uh, perspective, the number of nodes that are on the Lightning network and why I think while the technology might not be ready to ready for prime time yet, I still think it's extremely bullish for, for Bitcoin in the long term and potentially a really big opportunity for Bitcoin. And then lastly, the CME group futures and some of the quote unquote manipulation that might be going on or what might have happened with all this. So we will get into that and more throughout today's episode. Let's go. So starting off here today with our first bit of daily FUD, and this isn't really FUD. This isn't fear, uncertainty, and doubt. This is this is actually bad news for anybody who had NEM on CoinCheck. If you're not familiar with NEM, it's one of the top 10 cryptocurrencies out there in terms of market capitalization. Uh, and CoinCheck, which is a big Japanese exchange, uh, got hacked for over, we could see here, I'll link to this article from Coindesk in the description below on the YouTube article or in the YouTube video or on the podcast if you're listening to the podcast. But basically, CoinCheck is an exchange, cryptocurrency exchange based out of Tokyo. They got hacked for over $500 million worth of NEM tokens. So that's a... You know, we're talking about half a billion dollars that's just swiped off the face of the earth. And CoinCheck really, they had a press conference. They talked about it. You can see the picture up here. Uh, they literally had to, you know, they had to address it. They definitely don't look too happy. They look a little freaked out. I would be too if I just lost my customers half a billion dollars. So there was some fear going on initially. There were some rumors that you know, they were stopping uh, customer withdrawals and there was all this different rumors and stuff going on. Turns out that basically what happened is just like it sounds, they got all their NEM swiped from, I'm not sure if it was a hard or from a hot wallet or what it was. I'm assuming it was a hot wallet if they got it swiped that easily. But it sounds like none of the other cryptocurrencies on the exchange were affected outside of NEM. So if you had NEM on, uh, on CoinCheck, it's unfortunate. I have no idea what's, you know, what's going to happen with that. But uh, overall, I don't really think that this should have too much of a, an effect on the cryptocurrency market in general. Um, you know, when you think about this, when you think about what's going on here, it is one centralized exchange that apparently did not have the proper security protocols in place. And a lot of people are storing cryptocurrency on that exchange. And now that cryptocurrency is no longer there. And that is one of the big reasons and one of the the big examples of why people continue to say, don't put your money on centralized exchanges. Don't put your money on centralized exchanges. And it's different for a lot of the newbies out there because if you weren't around for, for Mt. Gox or if you weren't around for Cripsy or some of these other exchanges that have gotten hacked in the past, you know, you think, oh, wow, you know, it's safe. It looks like it's here. It is. Um, bad things can happen when you leave your, when you leave your money on an exchange with other people. So, it's really unfortunate that this has happened for anybody that had money in them on CoinCheck. I feel terrible about that, but it's another example for anybody that didn't have money on CoinCheck and they have their money on an exchange right now, be it Binance, be it Bittrex, be it Poloniex, be it whatever exchange out there. Get a hardware wallet, get a ledger, get a treasure, get anything. Use cold storage and get it off exchanges. Um, or get the vast majority of your crypto off of exchanges. If you want to keep a little bit on an exchange to to trade or to have, if you have an order set, then that's fine. But you should, under absolutely no circumstances, have the vast majority of your cryptocurrency on an exchange because bad things can happen. You have to take proper security protocols. Um, you know, there isn't refunds. It's not like if your bank account gets hacked and somebody drains fifty thousand dollars out of your bank account, your bank is probably FDIC insured and a lot of that other stuff. Uh, I doubt CoinCheck is. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But um, just goes to show that you really need to take the proper security protocols and measures. But when we zoom out and look at this, this you know, I'm sure there's going to be people out there. There's going to be a lot of ill-informed news articles. Mainstream media is going to pick this up and say half a billion dollars of cryptocurrency was hacked and stolen. And this goes to show that crypto is not ready, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't go to show anything other than, other than CoinCheck was negligent. CoinCheck did not have the proper security protocols in place. 
Coincheck was negligent. They took advantage of their customers' funds, and that's what it goes to show. It does not go to show anything about the cryptocurrency market in general. Uh, it doesn't go to show anything about NEM. Um, I don't have any NEM, but it doesn't really go to show anything about that. It is specifically an indictment of that specific exchange and their lack of proper security protocols. So overall, if somebody tries to tell you this is bearish for crypto, I don't really believe so. If it takes the cryptocurrency market down for a little bit of time, I think that's an opportunity to buy crypto at a discount. But that's just my personal opinion. Now, outside of that, too, there's a lot of uh, talk going on right now about uh, Davos, the World Economic Forum at Davos. And there are a lot of people coming out. A lot of people are asking, too, because um, it seems like everybody in the media wants to ask every single person at every single conference regardless of it, if it's a cryptocurrency conference or not. Hey, what are your thoughts about crypto? Uh, what do you think about Bitcoin? What do you think about this? And I almost feel bad for some of these people. Like I know I, I've given Jamie Dimon crap before. I've made a video about what he thinks about it and how he said he wanted to fire any trader who touched it and all that stuff. But we already know Jamie Dimon's thoughts on crypto for the most part. He basically doesn't like it. He doesn't agree with it. He doesn't like it. That's fine. If he has, you know, he doesn't have to like it. If he has the balls to say that, that's fine. But what's annoying is when every single journalist from now on is like, hey, yo, what's your thoughts on Bitcoin? Hey, you know, has it changed at all? And he's like, guys, just just leave me alone. Like I already said, I don't like it. Stop it. So and I, I kind of, you know, I can kind of get that too. At this point in time, the guy doesn't like it and it is what it is. So um, it's not going to change his mind if every single interview from here till eternity on Bloomberg and on CNBC, they're like, yo, Jamie, what's your thoughts on, on, on Bitcoin? What's your thoughts on crypto? So with that being said, all these world leaders, all these economic power players are, are talking about cryptocurrency. And some of them are saying, hey, you know, there's money laundering. We don't like it. We need to regulate this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I don't know. It's I don't really agree with the vast majority of these people. I mean, they're all flying in on private Gulfstream jets and, um, you know, talking about all this, whatever. I don't know. They're all they're all going to do their thing. In a lot of cases, cryptocurrency specifically can remove power from themselves and place power to other individuals or, or to society in a more distributed manner. So when somebody says, hey, I don't like crypto, you have to take that with a grain of salt because look at where their incentives are. They in the banking system? Maybe they're in banking and that does not play well. You know, crypto in a lot of cases outside of Ripple is the antithesis of, of banking. So, you know, if you're a big power player in a bank and you don't like crypto, I wonder why. Maybe you, you, there's legit reasons. Maybe you feel threatened. Who knows? But what, what all these people are saying and people are saying, you know, oh my God, we need to be worried. We need to be worried. Regulation is going to come, I'm sure. There are people that have said a variety of different things, but all these regulators are talking, all these heads of global banks are talking. Let, let them talk. It is what it is. They're going to, you know, they're going to say what they want to say. But for me to act like, you know, everybody in Davos is the most important person in the world because they spent $50,000 to fly it, you know, to, to buy a ticket, or it's actually probably over $50,000, but like spent between fifty dollars and $200,000 just to get a ticket to Davos, fly over in their private jet, lecture the entire world about how they should do business, and then go on from there. I don't know. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't really move the need. It doesn't really move the needle for me. And you know, some people might look at what's going on with crypto right now. And for the most part, there's been a nice little bit of a bounce, at least back up to $11,000 uh, this morning. And we've seen a tiny little bit of a nice little bit of a bounce recently. But what a lot of people were keeping an eye on was the uh, CME Group futures. The CME Group futures were closing. Uh, the January contracts, I believe, closed or are in the process of closing uh, in the very near term. I think it was 4 p.m. London time was when the January futures were supposed to close. Um, and a lot of people are talking about different manipulation strategies around the Bitcoin futures because... The Bitcoin futures are cash settled, at, which means that they are not actually settled with physical or digital Bitcoin. Um, so there is no actual exchange of Bitcoin. It's all done off of the uh, an exchange rate that is taken with the price of, of GDAX and Kraken and um, I think Bitfinex and a couple other a uh, couple other exchanges out there. So it's cash settled, not Bitcoin settled. So there is a an opportunity for individuals to manipulate Bitcoin on the open market. So if you were to manipulate Bitcoin on GDAX, if you wanted to drive the price of Bitcoin down, if you had it, if you opened up a short in the beginning of the month uh, on the CME group, you opened up a short at $15,000 and you had physical Bitcoin, you could have sold off that physical Bitcoin at an aggressive rate to 
granted you would have to be pretty legit in the space and have a ton of money and also do this uh on without the guys without any regulators noticing it but it's certainly possible where you could have gone short Bitcoin, you could have sold off a ton of Bitcoin now and in the near future to drive down the price so that your short was more and more profitable. Um, and because Bitcoin is, the futures are, are cash settled and it takes into account the actual Bitcoin price on the open market for the physically settled Bitcoin, um, you can manipulate the physically settled Bitcoin to, or just the actual like real Bitcoin markets, you know, GDAX and all those type of exchanges to drive the price of Bitcoin down. You could also do that on the way up as well. Um, however, for the most part, Bitcoin has pulled back since those futures have have gone live in the past month or so. So I think it's an interesting thing to, you know, there's there's a number of different articles out there that you can look at it. This was an older article that I've seen and I've, I've done a little bit more digging and research as far as um, how people kind of thought manipulation might take place. And there's some, certainly to, to their credit, there's been a couple uh, different news articles that kind of call the similar situation to this uh, in the past month to two months. So it's been kind of interesting to see how this might pan out. But a lot of people are bringing up some issues with the actual um, opportunity to manipulate these futures markets. I'm not sure if that is the exact reason that the price of Bitcoin uh, has pulled back over the month of January or anything like that. But it's certainly a possibility. And it's something to keep an eye on as we continue to have these futures contracts uh, come up in the near future here and the next one being next one being the next month out really being in February. So um, it'll be interesting to see how these continue to play out and whether or not there is some level of manipulation involved with this, whether you know people are, if you go down here, if you're not familiar with banging the clothes, if people are banging the clothes or if people did that with these crypto markets, that's certainly possible as well. Now, one of the last things I think is fairly interesting as we look forward today, but is lightning network. And there are a lot of people are talking I think in a, in a fairly bearish tone about Bitcoin and about cryptocurrency. And that's fine. Um, I overall, I'm bullish long term. Short term, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of undecided as far as Bitcoin and crypto goes. Um, short term, I'm a little bit undecided. But long term, I am very bullish on cryptocurrency. And one of the interesting things I think is the Lightning Network. And this is something that is seeing increasing adoption, like very, very strong adoption. Um, from a number of different, you know, from a number of different uh, people kind of testing out this network. And there's actually, so if we go down here right now, Elizabeth Stark is the CEO of Lightning Labs, who is the company developing the Lightning Network, um, has told people to, to hold up basically. So if you're not familiar with Lightning, it is a, Lightning is essentially an op, uh, a way to open up a, a, a channel between yourself and another individual or another node out there and transact at minimal, minimal cost between the two. And if you think about that, it makes a lot of sense for not, not necessarily somebody like, if I want to send you some Bitcoin, um, I'm probably just going to send you some Bitcoin. But if there is a company out there, like let's say between GDAX and, and Bittrex or something like that, where they're sending a ton of crypto back and forth to each other all the time, if they were to open up a Lightning node together, that would massively reduce the fees on the network. However, Lightning Network is still very early on in its, Lightning Network right now is still very early on in its infancy. The tech is not proven yet. Um, and the CEO, Elizabeth Stark of Lightning Network has said, hey, you know, you should really be using this on the test net. This is not something we should really be using mainnet yet. But a lot of people are just saying, hey, this thing is actually awesome. We really want to use it. We want to play around with it. If we lose money, we lose money. And... There are actually now 205 nodes right now running on the Lightning Network, and that is up significantly in the past 72 hours. So there are a lot of new nodes that are popping up on the Lightning Network and experimenting with this technology, which I personally think is massively bullish for crypto. If Lightning Network works out, it could be huge. Uh, it really could be huge. It could solve a lot of the issues with extremely high fees. It could solve a lot of the issues with speed. You know, not sound like a grandpa, but back in my day, uh, not not at all. But you know, back in 2013, 2014, when Bitcoin was not nearly as, as popular as it is now from a transactions perspective, Bitcoin was extremely fast and extremely cheap. If Lightning Network is able to reduce the stress on the Bitcoin network as a whole and allow individuals to you know, allow companies and individuals to transact through Lightning Network channels, that can really reduce the stress on the network along with SegWit. And I think it's 
pretty bullish long term and I'm excited about the possibilities there now again this is very early on and the tech is not the CEO of the company that's developing the tech is saying hey you really shouldn't be using this for real transactions yet we're just not there we don't have the development team in place um, we're trying to do this as fast as possible but this is something you should be aware of which I very much credit Elizabeth Stark for set for not setting people up to fail she's trying to tell as many people as possible hey you really, unless you're basically a, 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 a very intelligent software engineer with a lot of experience in Bitcoin, you should not be using the Lightning Network. You shouldn't be using it, at least not in mainnet, because you can easily lose your funds. So I really appreciate Elizabeth Stark saying, hey, don't be idiots, guys. Don't start encouraging people to accept this because the tech might not be there. And we don't want to be blamed if, any, if a bunch of people lose their money. So kudos to Elizabeth for that. Now, long term, though, I think it is bullish. Like I said, if the stress on the Bitcoin network is taken off and Lightning Network really opens up some, I think Lightning Network could just be massively uh, important for Bitcoin. So while the market itself might be bearish right now, I am keeping a firm eye on what is happening on the Lightning Network. The progress that li the Lightning Protocol team, uh, that, that the Lightning Labs team can put in place, that's going to be fantastic. I'm really rooting for them to just uh, crush it and do a fantastic job. I, I hope they do. I think they have this, a solid team in place. So I'm excited to see Lightning and I'm excited to see the number of nodes continue to increase. And I personally uh, am going to start, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of diligence today and tonight to start playing around and potentially open up a node, at least on the test net, um, and maybe just throw a little bit of money around in the main net uh, to test this out because I think it is a huge development. And a lot of people are talking about the issues with Bitcoin scaling, which are absolutely true. There's no doubt about Bitcoin scaling. But if this can solve some level of scale, some level of scalability, it's huge. It's it's absolutely huge. So certainly something to consider uh, as we move forward here. Outside of that, folks, if you are new to the channel by any chance, my name is Crypto Bobby. I do daily videos on the subject of cryptocurrency as well as YouTube Live Crypto Happy Hours. So if you consider subscribing, hit that subscribe button, the notify bell. I would really, really appreciate that. And if you have been around for a while, I really do appreciate you as well. Hit that like button so this video can get out to as many people as possible. Thank you so much for your time. Crypto Bobby signing out. Have a good one. Peace.